ends come fast and they go fast. Well, I got to uh, end off my weekend in a fantastic way last night and finally managed to meet up with Andrew Cerigliano, Bluefin Piper, and his companion. Male companion, I hasten to add. We met at a hotel in St. James's. Very nice it was too. They had a nice little uh, bar and uh, sort of terrace outside the smoking area. Decent sized area with some outdoor heaters. And it was very pleasant. We whiled away two hours in a flash. Just um, Andrew is such a nice guy, such an easy guy to talk to, and the guy he was with also fantastic. Just had some great chat on all topics pipes, tobacco, cigars, politics, anything and everything. It was really very enjoyable indeed. We exchanged gifts. Andrew was very, very generous. He bought me three fantastic tobaccos. I should have actually brought them with me, but I'm sure I'll show them to you in due course. One of them was uh, McClellan's Top Hat. Um, all of them were six, seven years old, something like that at least. Well, in that region anyway. Um, the top Hat, uh, if I remember correctly, is a, is a dark, I think it's a vapor, I'm not sure. Yeah, but anyway, it's, it's a good, rich, uh, Virginia-based tobacco. He also bought me an aged tin of Virginia Woods, which was fantastic of him to do that. Um, there was a third tin which was, oh of course, had those delights, um, GLPs I think it is, um, had those delights, I, can't, I always forget if I mix myself up between GLPs and um, Cornell and Dill, but I think it's GLPs. So had those delights is a, is a vapour, um, I've got a, an eight, about 8 ounce bag which I picked up at the Israti sale, it's an old bag, the 2003 8 ounce bag. But I've never opened it because I've always thought it would be a shame to open it and it turns out that I don't like it. So I've always wanted to try Hadda's Delight and I've mentioned this to Andrew a few times and it's come out in generally in passing and stuff like that. And um, he brought me a tin, an old tin as well. Um, so very, very cool. So I'm going to crack that very soon and see what it's like. And I've got to pop out here for a sec, I'll be back shortly. I'm going to try and keep it a bit short. I'm not sure how much memory I've got left on my phone because I recorded a lot of our meeting last night, uh, probably about 45 minutes to an hour's worth. So I still have to look through all of that before I upload it. This morning I've got my lump of coal and it's loaded with some Northwoods, fresh batch of North Northwoods, which I got from Boswell's the other day. I was going to crack one of the tins that uh, Andrew gave me, but um, I decided to do that indoors because um, I think the first one that I'll try is probably going to be the Haddo's Delight um, and I want to do a proper first impressions video of that one, which um, I can't do properly in the car. I can do it, but it's not, it's, it's not the same. but I'm not actually in my car today um, well you wouldn't notice it but in terms of the noise it should be a bit quieter I'm actually in my wife's car today and she doesn't have the same problem with her exhaust as I do I keep meaning to do it and I just don't get around to it you know life gets in the way and the exhaust is a funny thing you can drive around with a blown exhaust it doesn't actually um, you don't feel like it's something that you necessarily have to get done on the spur of the moment so I really truly hope to do it as soon as possible. It's been going like that for months.
ways it's similar to lots of blends and in other ways it's just something completely different. somebody preferring the fresher to the older stuff depending on how they like their tobacco because I think that the fresher stuff is a little bit more um, expressive you know the, the flavors are kind of much more uh, obvious whereas with the aged one it's kind of mellowed out it's kind of all melded into a single not quite monotonous linear flavor but it's it's just a more melded flavor whereas this is still and the flavors are still you know you can still separate them out they're still quite uh, discreet discreet as in separate rather than as in hidden Actually enjoying this fresh version. Anyhow, as I said, I don't want to keep this too long. Radio stations are still bagging on about the uh, Tory victory. Um, I guess that will happen still for a little bit over the holiday period. The Labour Party are licking their wounds, as you'd expect. portioning blame to this one, that one or the other. You know, there was a guy on last night just moaning on about how LBC was uh, bipartisan. 
uh, was biased rather. And uh, everybody, there was a kind of a witch hunt on Jeremy Corbyn. And they were blaming LBC for it. As if LBC would turn the tide of the electoral vote. But anyway, um, uh, it may well have an influence, but I can't see LBC, despite the fact that nowadays it's national. It used to be just a, a London station, but now it's across the country. But I don't see it changing the tide of a, of a vote. And the bottom line, whatever you say, you know, even if you say that the media did have a witch hunt on, on Jeremy Corbyn, the bottom line is, it was a profound victory for Tories, for the Conservative Party. And you just have to accept that. The country spoke. The country wanted Brexit. The country didn't want Jeremy Corbyn. You know, you could argue that the country didn't necessarily want Boris Johnson. I would go with that. But the bottom line is, the country spoke. And people just have to accept it and try again next time around. And it's as simple as that. And if Tories mess it up, they'll lose. And we'll see what Boris is about. Because the interesting thing is, by contrast to, to the States, and I'm sure some people will get on and say that I'm talking rubbish, and it's very possible because I'm not well up on American politics. But one thing which I do hear from people, um, and I do see in the comments, and I do see it on the media, is that Donald Trump, with all his craziness, and let's be honest, he is crazy as an American president. I don't know if he's crazy as a person, but he's crazy as an American president. The way he, we were talking about that last night, actually. Um, the way he behaves is so non-presidential. Some people say that's an amazing thing to have that in this day and age, that you've got somebody who's actually just being who he is and saying what he thinks. And on the other hand, you've got people saying that he's completely brought the country into disrepute by behaving so unpresidentially. people say is that he's done a lot of the things he promised he would do. Now, I'm sure some of you will get on and say, no, that's not true, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. Could be. But um, certainly he seems to back up his words with actions. So we'll see what happens with Boris. You know, people are making the comparison between Boris and um, Donald Trump and uh, we'll see we'll see if he's a man of action time will tell he's got a good mandate now he has an opportunity to really push things through Parliament we'll see what happens we'll see what he does with that fresh flush of power anyway before my memory dies I'm gonna say good day to everybody have a wonderful day and once again a fantastic meeting with Andrew. I will edit the video and try and get it up as soon as possible. Um, after that whole debacle with my internet at home, that's up and running again, but the whole region has gone down. British Telecom's broadband, something's happened to it. So it's not just me. I've had a look online and uh, using my phone, and I can see that a lot of people are having issues. Um, so, very frustrating. Um, I had a busy weekend work-wise. I had some jobs which you know, I was trying to load up to Dropbox for the client, and I couldn't do it. And uh, it's frustrating, let's put it that way. Anyway, I wish you all well. Have a fantastic week. I'll catch you on the next one. Uh, hopefully, I'll get the video up soon anyway. It's really, really cool. We had a great chat. And uh, the video is really just, obviously, it's pointed at Andrew. And he's looking very red-faced because we had an outdoor heater uh, on top of us, which had a a glow, a ruddy glow over us. But other than that, it was a lovely chat, as you'll see. Just some guys enjoying a chat over a cigar. Anyway, catch you later.